The next topic is accounts receivable. Accounts receivable transactions can be entered in a number of different ways. We're going to learn how to enter quotes and how to convert them into sales orders and sales invoices. We will also take a look at creating sales orders, creating sales invoices, and entering receipts and customer prepayments. Customers and prospects often request pricing information about goods and services a company sells. Since they are not actually purchasing products or services yet, they can be provided with a quote. Quotes do not affect the general ledger and they can be converted into a sales order or sales invoice when the customer accepts the quote. To enter a quote, select Quotes and Proposals from the Customers and Sales Navigation Center. By default, the good through date of a quote is set to one month past the quote date. If necessary, you can enter a different date. If you plan to print a quote, leave the quote number field blank. You'll enter it during the printing routine. If the quote was manually written, enter a quote number in the quote number field before saving the quote. The unit price displays the sales price of the item selected. For items tracked through inventory, you can select a price level from the drop-down list. If the item is not tracked through inventory, you can manually enter a sales price. After a customer accepts a quote, it can then be converted to a sales order or a sales invoice simply by clicking the Convert button. On the Convert window, select the type of sales transaction that you would like to convert the quote to and then click OK. Next, let's enter a sales order. Select Sales Orders from the Customers and Sales Navigation Center. Sales orders are usually created when a customer agrees to purchase items or services, but the items cannot be immediately shipped. The sales order window allows partial orders to be shipped and back orders to be tracked. The sales order number field displays the sales order number assigned by Sage 50. This number can be changed, but you cannot post duplicate sales order numbers. Select the Close Sales Order checkbox to manually close a sales order. A sales order is automatically closed after all items are shipped. Next, let's take a look at sales invoices. To enter invoices, select Sales Invoices from the Customers and Sales Navigation Center. In addition to creating invoices and bills for customers, the sales invoicing window is also used to invoice customers for items that were entered on sales orders. Unlike quotes and sales orders, invoices do update the general ledger. If the selected customer has opened sales orders, the Apply to Sales Order Number tab appears. Select a sales order to be filled from the Apply to Sales Order Number drop-down list. All open sales orders for the customer are listed here. The remaining field displays the number of items that remain outstanding on the sales order. This field cannot be changed on this window. Enter the quantity to be shipped to the customer in the Shipped field. This is also the number of items that the customer will be invoiced. The Amount field displays the value of the shipped quantity times the unit price. When shipping an item not tracked in inventory, enter the total price of the item in this field. You can quickly invoice a sales order in full by clicking the Ship button and selecting All. If the selected customer does not have any open sales orders, the Apply to Sales tab will appear by default. Leave the Invoice Number field blank if you plan to print the invoice later. Otherwise, enter a number in the field and click the Save button. To enter customer payments, select Receive Money from the Customers and Sales Navigation Center. When customers pay invoices, the amount they pay is entered on the receipts window. Cash sales can also be entered on this window if a customer does not require a printed invoice. Select the Apply to Revenue tab to enter receipts for items not associated with invoices. When a customer without open invoices is selected, this tab automatically displays. The GL account field displays the income account for the customer or item selected. If necessary, you can enter a different account here. 
If you do not see the General Ledger Account column on an Accounts Receivable task window, you can unhide it using the setting located in the Global Options area of Sage 50 Accounting. Select the prepayment checkbox to enter a deposit from a customer. After a prepayment has been posted, it can then be applied to one or more of the customer's outstanding invoices. Select the Apply to Invoices tab to receive payments against outstanding customer invoices. The discount field displays the amount of the discount if the invoice qualifies for one. If necessary, the amount in this field can be changed. The discount amount cannot be entered for a partially paid invoice. Enter the amount to apply to the invoice into the Amount Paid field. When you enter an amount, the Paid checkbox will be selected automatically. Otherwise, simply click the Paid checkbox to pay the invoice in full. If you accept credit cards using a Sage Payment solution, click the Process button to swipe or enter the customer's credit card information. If you are not a subscriber, you can click the Record button to save important credit card information about the cell including the transaction authorization number and any necessary comments. Accounts Receivable Reports provide information about your customers and their associated transactions. To preview or print these reports, select View All Customers and Sales Reports from the Customers and Sales Navigation Center. The Aged Receivables Report shows open unpaid invoices or unapplied credits by customer. Invoices are listed in the appropriate aging column as of the selected report date. This report helps to resolve questions regarding individual customer activity and balances. It is also useful for determining customer bad debt so that proper year-end adjustments can be made. The Cash Receipts Journal lists cash receipts and their related general ledger distributions for a selected date range. It displays individual amounts that make up a cash receipt and other information that a bank statement may not provide. The Customer List Report lists the name, address, telephone number, and resale number of each customer. As with all Peachtree reports, you can add additional information to this report by selecting the Columns button at the top of the report. This report is commonly used as a customer contact list. The Invoice Register report chronologically lists all invoices and their amounts for a selected date range. It is useful for keeping track of daily invoices. The Sales Journal Report lists all sales invoices and credit memos for the selected date range with related general ledger distributions. It can be useful for reconciling sales and for verifying general ledger postings. In addition to the reports shown here, there are several customers and sales forms, including sales order forms, packing slips, invoice forms, and receipts. These forms can be found in the Forms tab in the Reports and Forms window. And each form can be customized with your choice of fields, styles, and logos using the Form Design window.